Hi guys, it's Leah. Welcome back. Or welcome if you are new and welcome to Bookmas Day 2. Today we are going to be going through all of the books that I read in November, as always, from worst to best. I'm not going to lie, November was a very interesting month in general for me. But when it came to reading, I read 11 books. But in terms of what the books actually were and how I rated them, I only ended up reading three books three books from my physical tbr and the rest i read on my kindle and i don't own them which i'm not gonna lie i'm always striving to at least read half of the books a month on my physical tbr the other half on my kindle that did not happen babe three on my physical tbr the rest just on my kindle so it was a little bit of a strange reading month but i still read 11 books so i'm incredibly happy i also reached 100 read books for the year this month my goal for the entire year was 75 books and after november i'm now on 109 so i'm thrilled let's go through what i read okay the worst book that i read in November. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of not surprised that this is the worst. It is To Can Play by Ellie Hazelwood. I am not a huge Ellie Hazelwood. I Actually, that's a big fat lie. I used to love The Love Hypothesis. Like, I rated that five stars when I first read it. Ever since then, I'm not a huge Ellie Hazelwood lover. I don't tend to read a lot of her books, but I decided to read To Can Play or rather listen to the audiobook. This one is a novella from her. It's only available as an audiobook. I listened to it on Spotify with my best friend whilst we were just doing an entire afternoon of colouring. Or that I had a great experience experience reading it like reading it with my best friend although at times it was so funny like it was the most hilarious experience i think i've ever had reading a book just having a really wholesome afternoon so that experience listening to it was hilarious but it had to be it still definitely is the worst book that i've read i ended up rating this two stars i just think for me and ellie hazelwood she's not my go-to sort of romance author i love romances so much i love a romance that leans more literary but equally i also love a romance that is just a silly goofy time and i actually do feel like i could read another ellie hazelwood and probably enjoy it like listening to it whilst doing coloring just with my best friend was such a funny experience i wish i was one of those girls that could read an ellie hazelwood and take them seriously but for me they are always just so insta lovey and a little bit i don't know they're like sort of like big masculine man and they're like oh my god i'm so small girl i can't I can't get past it. I do honestly as well think that I probably will read another Ellie Hazelwood. Maybe I'll do it in the exact same style as I did through listening to the audiobook whilst doing the colouring with my best friend. I think they are fun and I think they are unserious. I do also like how all of her romances tend to follow that women in STEM vibe. I think that's really imperative. For me, in terms of the actual craft of her books, they're not for me, but I do find them fun and they are enjoyable to listen to, even if that is because I'm not entirely loving it. So I'm a little bit conflicted, but I ended up rating this two stars. It was fun. Do I feel Think it's good no not really but i kind of enjoyed my time listening to it then i read a book that i do own physically and that is the god of the woods by liz moore this is the proof copy so like it's not the final cover but it's the god of the woods and this reading experience for me was slightly heartbreaking because i went into this fully anticipating to rate it five stars I'd seen it absolutely everywhere i had seen so many people absolutely adore it i saw the cover and i was like oh my god this cover is one of the most gorgeous things i've ever seen in my entire life and i went into it solely knowing that it was a literary thriller which i absolutely adore but i'm not gonna lie this just i was so bored i was really enjoying the first half of the book i also listened to this via the audiobook so i didn't actually read it physically but the audiobook i feel like i don't know if that was a good idea or a terrible idea as i said i was obsessed with the first half of the book i was like oh my god this is gonna be a five stars like this is so fun this is so gripping i love the literary vibe no idea where it's going babe and then i got to the middle and nothing was happening it was so slow and i just got so bored and it felt like such a slog to get through which i was so sad about since finishing this it did take me like a month to read i have seen so many mixed reviews some people absolutely adore it some people also sit on my side where they're not really obsessed with it this is really sad because i was anticipating for it to be a five stars i did feel like i was the complete correct target audience for this but it just didn't land for me in the end i ended up rating it two and a half stars it wasn't a terrible book i i think it was just a bit too long and a bit too long-winded i was bored at times which was really really sad so two and a half stars for the god of the woods then we have a graphic novel and that is the girl from the other side volume four i've been slowly very slowly getting my way through this graphic novel series for what feels like two years it was fun like i love this series so much solely because illustrations are so beautiful it is so gothic and so whimsical and so folklore-esque and I love everything like that. First few volumes were perfect and so atmospheric because of it and I like could eat them up and I just never wanted it to end. But I think going on to this fourth volume I kind of recognise that it is so repetitive and really not much happens and I am solely reading them because of the vibe. If you've never read this graphic novel series we are essentially following this world where it's kind of split between the other side where like monsters and death lives and then like the ordinary side where the humans live. There's kind of this curse that if somebody from the other side touches you as a human you 
you become cursed also. So we are kind of following this young girl, human girl from the human side, who basically is being brought up by this monster from the other side. It is so heartwarming and it is so full of love and so full of kind of found family and like I said, folklore. And I really think that this series could go into so many different directions. I don't know how many volumes there are. I want to say there's at least 10. Obviously I only read up to the fourth one. It could get miles better. The fourth volume for me I felt was so repetitive in comparison to the first few that I had read in the series and I don't know. Like I don't know if I'm going to carry on with this series. If you've read this graphic novel series please let me know if it's good and if it gets better from volume four because I love the vibes. I can't really justify buying them slash reading them if it's solely for the vibes. Do you know what I mean? So if it does get better please let me know. This volume in particular though was probably one of my least favourites and I ended up rating it three stars. Okay and then the next book I'm not going to spend too much time on because you are going to get all of my very in-depth thoughts in a reading vlog for Bookmas very very soon but then we have The Women by Kristen Hanna. This was the first Kristen Hanna book I ever ever read and am I excited to read more? I think I am. I really want to read The Nightingale still. That was kind of the main one that I really really want to get to so if anyone again would recommend that please let me know but I did read The Women and this was a very interesting read for me. I'm not a huge historical fiction reader so going into that and this sort of read was an interesting experience. Like I said I'm not going to go in depth. I'm not even going to give you my rating babe. You're going to have to wait for this reading vlog. It's going to be one of the next one of the next few bookmas videos so you don't have to wait too long. But it was okay considering I don't read a lot of historical fiction and this was my first Kristen Hanna and I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. I am happy that I read it. I do have a couple of mixed opinions on it and I don't know. I'm intrigued to see what other people think about this because I feel like so many people loved it this year. In my head I'm equally like is that because so many people absolutely adore Kristen Hanna? Like she is an author by all for them or did they just fully love this book. Who knows, I go very much in depth into all of my thoughts for the women in one of my next bookmas videos, so keep your eye out for that. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> then we have another graphic novel. I read this one because I got approval of it on NetGalley and it's in a subject that I'm very fascinated by and that was Witchcraft, A Graphic History, Stories of Wise Women, Healers and Magic by Lindsay Squire. This is such a beautifully illustrated graphic novel. The illustrations floored me. I was completely obsessed with it and I kind of wish I owned it for that. Basically a graphic novel on witchcraft craft in Europe and it follows different sort of witches in Europe through different periods of time and it is a subject that I'm so fascinated by and I definitely learned stuff whilst reading this graphic novel. The only critique of it is I do think it could have been a little bit more inclusive. I would have loved to see a little bit more inclusivity surrounding these periods of time and all of these places and these people but I did learn a lot from it that I didn't already know and like I said it was so beautifully illustrated. It's such a gorgeous actual book. I would definitely recommend it if you are interested in the subject. I read it so incredibly quick it was a really nice one to read whilst drinking my tea in the morning and yeah would recommend this if you're interested in the subject but it could have been a little bit more inclusive. Then we have another really short one that I read entirely at work and that is A Shining by John Foss. I have been intrigued to read something by John Foss for a while because he won the Nobel Prize in Literature last year. So many of my colleagues at work have been obsessed with him, absolutely recommend him to every single customer that walks through the door and from that I've been so intrigued. He has a lot of books published and he has a lot of long books published but A Shining is literally like 40 pages. It's tiny. I went into it knowing essentially nothing which is how I would recommend you do it because like I said it's literally 40 pages long but if you want to know a little bit about what it's about we are essentially following our protagonist who is a man and he is just driving like he's driving on this road through this forest and then one day he stops and it's about this one night of him in this forest where he's maybe a little bit lost and he maybe sees something weird in there. It's so open to interpretation. I think that John Foss's narrative is so interesting and so unique. It is so stream of consciousness. If if you do not like stream of consciousness novels, do not read this. I personally do, but equally this is one of the most stream of consciousness books I have ever read and in a different way to everything else that I've read like that. I think in terms of its narrative, it was very repetitive because we are literally following this protagonist's thoughts and that's quite literally it. There isn't much description, but equally the description that we do get is so lush and intricate and so vivid and I can perfectly picture the entire scene. It was a very interesting read. It was a very short, unique read and I'm really, really happy that I read it and I'm happy that I read stuff from John Foster now. I am intrigued to read more from him if you are a John Foss lover. If you're a John Foss fan, please let me know where I should kind of go on to next. But A Shining, I mean if you're looking for a really short literary sort of book to read before the end of the year to like boost your reading goal, highly recommend. It was very stream of consciousness though and very unique and I don't think that everybody would love it for that. But for that I rated it three and a half stars. As you can tell babe, we had a lot of threes, three and a half star ratings. We didn't really, there were a couple of books that I'm like chef's kiss but really I'm hoping to 
December is a lot better for that. But now we're on to another book that I finally read physically and that is One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. Do you say I read this physically? I also was kind of alternating between this and the audiobook as you would have seen in my most recent vlog and I really really enjoyed this. I have been slumping quite a bit recently. I've been slumping in terms of my reading. I've been slumping in life in general babe but this really really pulled me out of it. I was really craving a fun bingeable thriller and this is exactly that. I've read a couple of Ruth Ware books in the past. I've read Turn of the Key and One by One. What is that one? Like the one where they're kind of snowed in. I read those two. I feel like I hadn't read a Ruth Ware for a minimum of two years and I used to really really love them so I'm glad that this kind of lived up to that fun thriller from her. In this we are essentially following a reality TV show called One Perfect Couple where our protagonist and her boyfriend of three years kind of go on to it. Her boyfriend is kind of an actor. He kind of wants to have his big break but their relationship isn't really going the way that she's kind of wanted. It's not going great for them. It's not going great for her and she kind of decides to go on it with him solely for his like fame and like to kind of get him out there. But obviously it's a thriller babe and one thing about me I love an isolated thrillers. Those are always my favourite. Give me a thriller where they're like stormed in and they can't leave. Maybe there's a murderer on the loose and we need to figure out who it is. Kind of very Agatha Christie style. Those are my favourite thrillers and of course this was a locked room thriller and I loved it for that. It was so fun. Though I do say it's fun there definitely were some heavier themes in this. I would definitely check trigger warnings for like domestic abuse. It was heavy in places. Some characters, oh my god, all of the men in this pissed me off. Girl, girl, do, oh my god, the men. Rooting for some of these women like nothing else. I actually couldn't believe it. It was such a fun thriller and it really did grab me sort of out of that reading slum. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good page turner of a thriller that maybe doesn't take itself too seriously. This one is a great one for that. The rating that I sort of ended up on, I think in my vlog I said 3.5 stars, but I think now I'm very much leaning more towards 3.754 because I can't stop thinking about it. Next we're on to the last book that I read physically and that was Uzumaki by Junji Ito. I have had this book on my shelf I want to say for a minimum of maybe two and a half years. Like when I first started my job, I feel like I got this because I was like, oh my God, discount, slay, stunning, gonna get it. Oh my God, it's been sitting there for ages and I'm so happy that I finally read it because people say that this is Junji Ito's like prized possession. This is his best work. I've read a good handful of Junji Ito's now and do I agree with that? In some ways, yes. In other ways, no. Do I think that it's his most grotesque work? Yeah, babe. Yeah, I'm traumatized by this book. If you don't know who Junji Ito is, he is essentially like the master of horror manga. He writes such brilliant, grotesque, disgusting, but incredible and unique horror mangas. Izumaki specifically literally just follows spirals and the different spirals in somebody's life and how you spiral from a spiral. If you've read this, how long did it take you to recover? Because I'm still fearing for my life slightly. I really, really love this because it was so disgusting and so grotesque. It truly cannot look away because it is so disturbing. Equally, it's so brilliant and it's so unique and I would take I would love to take a peek into this man's brain for 30 seconds I feel like I'd be too mortified to stay any longer but like his brain is just I don't get it I'm really really happy that I finally read this and I've ticked it off of my 24 for 2024 because it was one of those books equally ticked it off of my Junji Ito TBR in the end I rated it four stars now we're on to the top three books that I read in November and all of these yeah actually all of these I read on my Kindle first and foremost we have another one that is going to be in the same bookmas video as The Women by Kristen Hanna so I'm not going to go very in depth but that is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez I cannot believe that I finally read this book I've been wanting to read Just for the Summer all year because I have seen so many people say it is their favourite romance book of the year. I remember when the hype of this was right and the FOMO that I got. At that point, I had never read an Abby Jimenez. Since then, I have finished that entire series now. And if you want to know where sort of Just for the Summer sits in my rating of this series, you're going to have to watch that vlog. I think that Abby Jimenez is just such an incredible romance writer. She is the prime example, sort of like Emily Henry. And how my favourite romances always have that little bit more depth and that little bit more something going for them, especially in terms of like grief or family exploration, especially like like just for the summer. I did really, really enjoy this. Again, if you want to see my rating, you're gonna to have to wait for that vlog, but I'm thrilled that I finally read this this year. The second best book that I read in November is a fantasy. It's a fantasy. I am on my fantasy street. I have had the time of my life reading fantasy books this year. I feel like I've really, really got into the genre this year. I have always read fantasy books. I read fantasy books a lot when I was first getting into reading, but I kind of stopped once I found my main go-to genre. This year, babe, I've been experimenting with fantasy like nothing else, and I'm so excited to carry on doing that next year in 2025. I have so many plans in terms of what fantasy books I want to read for videos. I want to literally binge read some of the most popular, famous fantasy series. I am so, so excited. So the fact that my second favourite book of November is a fantasy, 
I'm literally obsessed. And that one was The Crimson Moth by Kristen Cicerelli or The Heartless Hunter, if you're in the US. I saw this all over my TikTok a few months ago and everybody was obsessed with it. Everybody was raving about it. And I knew I kind of wanted to get to it, but I just didn't. And it was on my November TBR. And I knew the second that I was craving a fancy that that was the one I was going to go for. And I'm so happy that I finally read it. I now need every single witch ex witch hunter fantasy romance that has ever been published. If anyone has any good recommendations for that, please let me know because I feel like this is going to be a subgenre or a trope that I'm going to eat up. In this, like I said, we are following a witch and a witch hunter. I loved this world so much. I absolutely adored the world building. I loved the history of our protagonist and her family and the lengths that she goes to in order to survive. I love this so much. I am so excited to read The Rebel Witch. I do actually have a proof of it on my Kindle, so I'm really, really hoping I can get to it before the end of the year. I will definitely be including that in a reading vlog if you guys would like to see it because I feel like I'm gonna cry. I feel like I'm gonna be obsessed with the second book just as much as the first. Yeah, I would highly, highly recommend the Crimson Moth if you're looking for a good fun fantasy. Like I'm literally, I cannot stop thinking about it. I ended up rating it four stars, but honestly, 4.5 stars. And then my favorite book that I read in November was The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. I have fallen in love with Adrian Young solely from two books, like Spars for Forgetting and The Unmaking of June Farrow. I have loved them both so much. I think that Adrian Young perfectly balances that mix of magical realism, fantasy, and sort of romance. They are so perfect for me. They are so atmospheric. They are literally the definition of autumn and winter reads and on top of that the writing is so astonishing and so beautiful and so eloquent and they are so fast paced like I didn't kind of binge read this because I read it when I was in Edinburgh it was one of those books that every time I wasn't reading it I couldn't get it out of my brain I couldn't stop thinking about it and oh my god I was just obsessed it is another witchy one I could perfectly picture every single scene just so brilliantly and it is another one that I genuinely cannot stop thinking about the ending of this book I nearly cried I nearly sobbed like I could not see where it was going it had me guessing the entire time and I really really do 100% recommend it I feel like this is one that I'm literally never gonna get out of my brain and I know that Adrian Young has another book coming out in 2025 actually don't even know what that's about but you bet your ass I'm pre-ordering it right now like I need to get that book in my hands I cannot wait I think again if you love a fantasy that maybe leans a little bit more literary has the most beautiful writing has that romance magical realism element in it bonus points you love autumn and winter and that sort of atmosphere you are literally gonna love this you are gonna eat this up and if you do read it please let me know what you thought about it like I said I think it's one that I'm going to be thinking about for a really really long time and Adrian Young is definitely like undoubtedly become an author by author for me I loved this and when I finished it I ended up rating it 4.5 stars but talking about it is going to be 4.75 yeah those are all of the books that I read in November from worst to best as always if you've read any of these books whether you like them or you dislike them please let me know what you thought or if you watched until the very end of this video comment any sort of fantasy-esque emoji because I feel like I read a lot of great fantasy books in November as always too if you did enjoy this video and you are not yet subscribed it would mean the world if you did consider doing so I would love to have you here we have so many videos coming for bookmas and I am so excited for you guys to see them all you can also find all of my socials in my description box down below where we have my patreon my instagram my tiktok my goodreads and so much more finally as always thank you so much for being here and for spending some time with me I really really hope you enjoyed and I will see you again very very soon for bookmas day three